thank you everybody for joining me today. Uh, this is going to be a very timely and important web class. I'm going to teach you how a one hour legacy talk is going to produce a lifetime of business. And at the end of the web class, I'm going to provide a link to all the legacy questions that I'll be talking about during this process so that you can stay fully engaged throughout. This is going to be worth every minute of what you're going to see. So, first of all, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tom Cormier. I am the co-founder of the Living Legacy Project. Now, our mission overall is to provide free legacy education and resources so that we can help families preserve their past, enrich their present, and inspire their future by sharing their legacy stories. This is going to play into you. Um, working together with values-based businesses and organizations, what we're doing is we're helping to save the greatest body of wisdom in history from being lost forever. This is at risk of going extinct. So I'm glad that you're able to learn a little bit about what we do. Now to accomplish uh, our mission, over the last decade we built a multifaceted story capture and sharing platform uh, and it includes the award-winning uh, LegacyStories.org archive and uh, sharing website our free mobile app, and our interactive handbook that turned out to be the catalyst of the whole thing. I'll tell you a little more on that later. So providers uh, throughout the senior care continuum, they're using our platform to bring immense added value to the families that they serve. Um, financial advisors and estate planners and insurance specialists actually are the, now the fastest growing segment of our legacy ad advocates. And they are using our tools and resources so that they can personalize relationships and they can make a difference in the lives of their clients. In fact, uh, some of you are pretty familiar with it, but uh, the new DOL fiduciary rule that just went into effect, the entire industry is having to find new ways to personalize their relationships with, the with their clients. And actually, um, Raymond James presented a TED Talk on this very subject because um, it is becoming front and center all of a sudden. Uh, and you can see how the whole idea in this TED Talk was teaching, telling their um, advisors uh, how to get to know their client's story. And this happened at their annual advisor conference. A little shameless plug, but in any case, they featured our platform right up there on the big screen. So now you know a little bit about who I am and uh, who we are and what we're about. Right now what I want to do is I want to talk about you. There is an enormous emerging legacy tsunami is what I call it that's coming ashore as millions of baby boomers enter their golden years. The research is showing that they don't want to just, uh, they don't want their life lessons and experiences to be wasted. This Allianz study actually shows what's most important to boomers when it comes to passing down uh, an inheritance. And this should get your attention right now. It's so timely, right? And it's not just boomers. Gen Xers are at the midway point in their lives. And they've already accumulated a treasure trove of life experiences. I'll talk more on that later. Here's what I want to do. I want to give you a few ways that you can use legacy talks to your advantage. You can have a, like I said, you can have a fantastic reason to get in front of your A-list clients without having to pitch a product. Now, I'm sure that you have clients that you you probably haven't spoken to in years. Some of those might have had big changes in their lives. So inviting them to a legacy talk is a great way to reconnect in a meaningful way. And this way, more business could be waiting right there. And this is also an awesome way to mitigate any buyer's remorse, especially after onboarding a new client. When you invite the client and even their spouse to have a legacy talk after a sale, it's going to show them that they made a great decision. And obviously, as you can see, it's going to be more likely that they're going to refer you, they're going to refer you to others. This is how you can grow business, and not only that, to grow business within the family, so you can go deep to build your practice, not just wide. And with all the investment of time that you're putting into acquiring one new client, doesn't it make sense to get more out of each client than always chasing new ones? Some of the very best business is right there inside the family. You can use legacy talks for prospecting. 
sometimes it's better to acquire clients by coming in through the side door. What I mean by that is when you tell people that you're a legacy advocate, it's going to get their attention. And that allows you to invite them to sit for a fascinating one-hour legacy talk. And because this topic is unique and it's universally appealing, with an emerging legacy tsunami coming ashore, you're definitely going to find more people agreeing to sit with you about this topic than if you went out and just directly pitched your product or service. Now, there are some situations that obviously you want to get right to the point, but I'm just saying. So with that said, I am now going to show you a proven process that's going to dramatically change your client or prospect's perception of you, and that from being their advisor to a valued friend and a legacy advocate. Let me walk you through the four stages of the legacy talk. Okay, so we're going to create the environment, and then we're going to get the client to talk about others, and we're going to get the client to talk about their story, and then we're going to have them talk about life. And each one of these stages builds upon the previous, and they're specifically designed to progress from breaking the ice to then really getting the stories to flow. So there, there's actually a um, science to how this was developed. Matter of fact, we developed this process by training over 5,000 hospice caregivers how they could elicit and record stories of their patients. And this happened under the most difficult circumstances. So let's get into stage one, creating the environment. So as you might expect, it's going to take a little while to get the stories flowing. But once they start, the last thing you're going to want is to be interrupted or distracted to kill the mood. So what you want to do is you've got to take a few minutes to eliminate as many distractions as possible. The obvious things. Set your phones to vibrate. And if this is happening in your office, ask your assistant to hold your calls. You just can't stop the flow, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to find seating that feels like home. Even if it's in your office, try to set that environment, whether it's on a comfortable couch or at a kitchen table. You want to kind of treat this whole vibe just like if you had friends and family visiting, because that's actually what it's going to be like. It's actually going to be productive and helpful if you invite the client's spouse or a partner. And even more so, if you can invite an heir or an important family member, that is great too. Not too many in the, in the, in the conversation, but a few key members. This way, all at one time, they're going to get to know you more on a personal level. And you'll get to know more on them as well. And I'll show you how that is going to be impactful a little bit later. Bottom line is, you just want to make sure that you're in a private and comfortable setting, no distractions, for a full 60 to 90 minutes. Um, the questions that I'm going to be talking to you, you really should be giving these questions to the client in advance of this conversation. Um, that way um, they can see that this legacy talk isn't going to be intrusive, and it's not. And if you haven't set the questions in advance, then what you want to do is just give them a copy while you're sitting down, have them review a little bit. So stage one in the legacy talk is really simple. But it is critical that you prepare the room and set that environment. I don't care whether it's in your office or the client's home. So the key here is you want to keep it light. It isn't an interrogation. It's not really even an interview. It's a conversation. You want to keep it light. You want to keep it fun. So we're going to move to the next stage, which is to talk about others. And you're probably going to find that a lot of people feel pretty awkward talking about themselves for any number of reasons. Like I said, humility, all these kinds of things. Maybe it's just in their personality, right? So in our research, what we do is we found that the best way to break the ice is by having them talk about others. And who better to talk about when it comes to a client's legacy than their family elders and ancestors? I mean, just a little bit of information about these relatives can help reveal how your client's approach to life and career may have been influenced. And by the way, you're going to be talking to a lot of people like me, and then you're going to have others who you have to basically pull teeth to get a word out of. It's just the way it is. But that's why it's best to start with really simple questions that only require simple answers. The goal is in this stage over here is just to break the ice and get the client talking. 
and warming up for the next stage where the action really happens, okay? All right, so you can ask simple questions like this. Talk about non-intrusive. Where did your grandparents live for most of their lives? By the way, I'd be interested to know where your grandparents lived. Even more so, what did they do for work? Do you know? Where did your parents live when they were raised? All right? This can be very interesting. It could be revealing because it will tell us a little bit about their humble beginnings or other beginnings. And more importantly, what do they do for work? Now, we're going to finish this with a legacy question right here. Did you inherit any part of your work ethic from your elders? This is a great question. I know I did. But there may be just simple things that they apply in their world or their life or their, uh, their life in their business. Does it matter? It may. It may play as you move forward in this talk. By the way, you can rephrase any of these questions to fit your style, but it's crucial to ask them in exactly the sequence that I've outlined here. What you're going to find is after just a few simple questions and answers, the family narrative is going to begin to develop. And it's going to establish the foundation upon which the rest of the legacy talk is going to take shape. Let me ask you this. What if you could ask your great, great, great grandparents what life was like in their day? I mean, if you had that chance, I can promise you, you'd lean in to hear their answers. You'd be fascinated by every word they spoke. You'd be riveted to their personality, their attitude, and even their accent, every nuance you would hear. You'd be so interested. And that's not even a mention to how curious you'd be to know their story. That is how curious I want you to be when you're asking these questions. Put yourself in that place. Because when you show genuine interest, the client is going to pick up on that big time. So now that the conversation's flowing a little bit, the client's going to find it much easier to start talking about his or herself or her own story. So in the talk about the story stage, the questions are going to become a little more open-ended. This really is the most exciting and an interactive stage of your legacy talk. You want to periodically share a little tidbit of your own story if it relates. All right? So don't be afraid to do this but only do it two or three times during the whole legacy talk, and you've got to make it brief, okay? So let's get into the story part. Oh, by the way, <laughs> you're probably going to want to start some of these questions with these three magical words, tell me about. What it does is it gives the client permission to say whatever they want and, and do it in the way that they want to say it. Okay, so let's start with growing up. What was your neighborhood like as a child? Was that, were they an army brat that went from base to base to base and they really never had a, a neighborhood? Did they grow up in poverty on a farm? Did, were they, did they grow up in the city? What was it like? Did they have a big house? Did they, did they grow up in, what was their neighborhood like if they grew up in privilege? What was your favorite subject in school and why? We all had our favorite subject in school. <laughs> and you ask why, it may be the teacher. Who knows? Who were your heroes growing up? This is a great one. It could have been a teacher. It might have been your father. It could have been one of your best friends who was a you know, hero in, on, on the football team or whatever. Tell me about your first real job. When you first onboarded your clients, you, even if you know they went to college, you probably didn't ask them, why did they choose their college major? You'd be surprised what that is. And it could be hilarious. It could be a hilarious reason that has no play in their life now. That's okay. That's where the fun is. Okay, you, you want to be, to be light. You want this to be interactive, okay? Did you participate in sports or any other activities while you were in college? <laughs> well, this may lead to all kinds of interesting banter, if you will, but it's great. We'll go into family and faith. You do not want to get into religion or politics. Keep it out, keep it out, keep it out. But you still want to be able to talk about somebody's faith just on the very highest points, and you want to talk about their family. So what special talents do your children have? Well, let me tell you. If your client has kids, and you know it, and could be that your, 
kids, the client's kids are in their 40s or 30s or 20s. I can just tell you, just like you would, somebody sets that question up for you, they're going to pour out every accolade they can about their children. And it's going to be fantastic. And what's great about this is they may talk about the child's talents, which, you know, if it's an adult child, you're gonna, you, could, you could at some point in the future get to meet that child. And when you do, just knowing that you can say, hey, I didn't realize you were such a great violinist, you know. And, you know, my daughter plays violin too. It's those little things you pick up that you're never going to get in a discovery meeting. Okay, in your first onboarding questions. That's what the power of this conversation is. Then you move to how did, how do you, how did you come to know your faith? Now, obviously, this is easy if you know that the person is a spiritually a spiritual person, if you know that about them. But they, they may not have a faith. They may have fallen out of their faith. If they did have a faith, I can tell you, this is something that everybody wants to be asked. And very few people will ever ask them it. Something substantial made them know their faith. And because of this, it's going to be a great story. Has your faith ever been tested? <laughs> so, so think about that, right? Nobody who has any faith has gone through life without it being tested. <laughs> These are their life lessons. And, you know, they have them in them just like you do. And, you know, the problem is, is that nobody's ever taken the time to ask. And here you are, their legacy advocate now, taking the time to not only ask, but the time to listen. This is powerful stuff, folks. I'm just telling you. Service and career. When you ask them what causes they support, they'll tell you which one of them are. If you're a financial planner, you're certainly going to get a hint into that world, and you'll know that those sorts of things, okay? Have you served in the military? When? Where? What branch? Who or what inspired you to serve? Not just in the military, but to serve the cause you care about most. What is one of your proudest career accomplishments? Who or what inspired your career path? What made you choose the career you're in right now? This could have stemmed all the way back to what was your favorite subject in school? Or what was, your, what was one of your heroes when you were growing up? Or what ethics did you get from your parents or grandparents? On the other hand, it could be I did all the conventional things and none of them worked. And one day I saw this opportunity and I said, this is what inspired me. So now we're going to move on to the talk about life stage. These questions are what legacies are made of. So let's go into these. I'm sure you've been asked it or thought about it yourself. How do you measure success in your career? How do you measure success in life generally? What is the, one of the best life decisions you ever made? This might be a great tell me about. Tell me about one of the best life decisions you ever made. <laughs> My wife's going to tell you or would tell you. It's marrying her 47 years ago. <laughs> so, and the truth is, it is one of the best life decisions. It's the best life decision I ever made. So there you go. See, you just learned a little bit about me. You know, I wish I could ask you so I get to know a little bit about you. This is fantastic stuff, right? Tell me about one of the best financial decisions you ever made. So if you're a financial advisor, I'll guarantee when you were asking your discovery questions about their financial position and all that, you didn't ask them what one of their best financial decisions they had ever made is. We're going to finish this off with stories and questions about giving. What is one of the best gifts that you've ever received? This could be monetary. I'm asking you that actually right now. This could have been a monetary gift that pulled you out of a situation that you just can never be more thankful for. It could be the gift of your child. And now this is where legacies are made. Tell me about one of the best gifts that you've ever given someone else. This could be a gift that was little more than a shoulder for someone you love that got diagnosed with cancer and that you stayed with them 
the whole way through and that they acknowledge that. And to you, you just know what you brought to that person. It could be that you donated to start a nonprofit that changed the lives of people in the community, that saved lives, who knows. It could be any number of things, monetary, emotional, who knows. But this is what legacies are made of right here. And this is a fantastic way to end a legacy talk. But as you can see, in only about an hour of on it, you can see why you don't want to interrupt this. An hour of uninterrupted, fascinating conversation. You're probably going to learn more about your client's values and their own life experiences than his or her own family. They're going to be awakened to the treasure trove of wisdom and experiences that they have and that you helped reveal. And with this profound awakening, it will be such a wonderful experience. What do you think? They're going to want other family members and close uh, friends to have that same experience. <laughs> so when you finish the Legacy Talk, well, the situation is probably going to present itself so that you can begin discussing their financial legacy or other issues that relate to your service. But what you want to do is you want to give them a tangible takeaway. And that takeaway needs to help them continue to have more legacy talks with the family. You just opened up their eyes to the value of what they bring. And since you're now the family legacy advocate, you're going to have plenty of good reasons to meet them more often. And, of course, the more often you meet, the more opportunities are going to present themselves. And that's why we developed the Legacy Stories Handbook. You can actually go staple your business card or write a personal message on the inside cover. And this way, they're never going to forget who helped them start building the family legacy. This is how legacy advocates can quickly form a durable relationship with their clients and the families that can produce a lifetime of business. But they're not going to be jumping ship on you just because of the next, you know, shiny thing. When you're tied into the heart and the soul of the family, when you're there as a legacy advocate, your whole relationship changes. Your bond to them, the bond to the family, especially when a, a major transition occurs, like the patriarch dies and now you know everything's in flux. We know that 9 out of 10 heirs are going to fire their parent's advisor when uh, they receive their inheritance. Well, because you don't really have much of a relationship with them normally. And not only that, but the same thing with the matriarch. The matriarch's the one that's going to get all the money at first. You know, and what kind of relationship do you have with the matriarch? If you're in the financial services industry, except now, finally, it's coming around. But traditionally, not much. What a great way to bring her into the conversation and win her loyalty for life. And the truth is, we actually estimate that in the next two to three years, people are going to expect their advisors and providers to be having legacy talks as part of their services. Who better to do this? I mean, you're at the tip of the spear. So by being proactive and becoming a legacy advocate now, before it's commonplace, this is where you can differentiate yourself. This topic is fresh, and it can secure the future of your practice. So now I want to close this webinar, and I'm going to give you a list of questions that I promised. I'm going to be send you a link in a follow-up email, and I'm also going to, in that email, I'm going to send you information about how you can become a certified legacy advocate. And you can do this in less than three hours of video tutorial training. Um, in fact, you've already taken one of the seven short certification tutorials right here already. You've only scratched the surface. Uh, on what a CLA can do for your business. When you're done with the training, you can receive a certificate of completion. You can add CLA to your credentials. Now, to give you an idea of what can happen with this training, I want to share an email with you that uh, we received from one of our CLAs. What she did, she adapted her training and resources, and she decided to create and promote a workshop. And she had no idea of what was going to happen when she did it. But this is how hot this topic is right now. Let me read it to you. And this is a much bigger in, in, uh, email than this. This is an excerpt. She goes, 
I'd love to give you some feedback on the workshop we did. We actually booked two more, June 13th and June 18th. Because the first one filled up so fast, we had to turn people away. Who turns people away you know, in, a, in a workshop, right? It just doesn't happen. There's always a, half the people show up. It's crazy, right? We sent out a survey following the event, and we had responses with very high marks on every question. I think we've hit a hot button, and I sincerely appreciate the Legacy Stories tools. tools. They have been very well received. How about that? Right? So I hope you learned a lot today. And I really hope you'll join our cause because it'll, it complements what you do so perfectly right now. And I'd like you to become a certified legacy advocate so that you can take a lead in your community. Now, you can download the questions now. Um, you know, if you don't want to wait for the email that I'm going to send, all you do is go to legacystories.org and uh, go slash questions. And you're going to find information about the CLA thing there, too, okay? So I appreciate the opportunity to introduce you to the Living Legacy Project, and I hope you were inspired, and I uh, hope you're inspired to change the conversation with your clients. a great time to do that.